Are you having a problem? No, Do you want tissue? I don't. She, it's weird that I'm getting emotional because I, I like, fuck, I just had something happen to me that was like so mean. There's a lot of emotion that I never like processed from all that. Wait, but she's not here yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz. And today we got a big superstar guest. Yeah. You know who we have? Yeah. Whitney Cummings. Woo! Whitney Cummings. When is Whitney Cummings? When is Whitney Cummings? You know what's funny? She's been Wh here for like two hours. <laughs> I know, hours. but she's not in the room. <laughs> I know. But I'm, I was very excited and we had, uh, this is premature uh, podcastulation. It's a good one. Isn't that a good one? Is be I started the podcast. her name is Cummings? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So good one on you too. Thank you. <laughs> this has been great. But we, we were just sitting here uncomfortably waiting for the guest, which, yes. is, which is great. Are there any questions from the home audience? What? What are you saying? I, we can't you could, hear you. Talk to in the mic. Wait, what are you doing? How do you know? Talk to <laughs> the, in, the, in mic. the mic. That's my son, Alex. No, it's no, not on. It's not. <laughs> she coming? It's not on. I wasn't talking. Oh. oh. <laughs> what a waste of time. Uh, Jeremy, you can edit a little bit of this. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Whitney Cummings. Is she coming? Ladies slowly. and gentlemen, Whitney Cummings. No? No, just still pre Cummings. Pre Cummings? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Whitney Cummings. No. Ladies and gentlemen. Don, can what? we stop? No, we have to, I wanna, I, she deserves a really good introduction. This is you not a really good, this is not a really good television, introduction. <laughs> film, comedy star, uh, Netflix specials, five specials to be, Whitney Cummings. Now, she says, now she's Cummings. Now she's coming? <laughs> yep. Now she's, Whitney's coming. Whitney, Whitney! Here, sorry, I had to put my bra back on. You had to what? <laughs> put my bra back on. I yeah, know, no one knows why. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's important for our guests to be supported. Yeah. Um. And, thank you. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. You're not oh, look, you brought. To, you're not allowed to use my likeness in this. <laughs> I see what you did there. I knew you would. You are so much prettier than just a skull. Thank you. <laughs> 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 you know how well, sometimes when people, I think about compliments for a second, because uh -huh. sometimes when you accept a compliment right away, just as like an instinct, you realize like 20 minutes later, that's a complete insult, you know? Are you that neurotic? I'm not that neurotic. Other people are just that rude. So, you know, when pe comics of all people we know, when someone's like, oh my God, I could never do what you do. Like I, that is like, or, or they'll come up to you after, uh, after uh, being on stage and they'll be like, um, you know what? They just don't get you. It went, that just went right over their heads. You are so funny. I Do not that. listen to that. And I'm like, what? I thought I, I did care. good. Or when people are like, I, you know what I love about you? You are so down to earth. You just, you don't even care what you wear. Oh my God. And I'm like, I kind of try really hard. <laughs> you know, I always say there's, I have like a 15 second rule. When anybody approaches me. For sex? 15 second rule. <laughs> yes. I got to be done that and out of there. In and out. In and out. And then, and then you end up with one of these. This you is my daughter. Off 15 seconds. This is 15 seconds of work right here. I do want to say something sincere real quick, which is watching you two for the past half hour gives me uh, hope and it makes me think I, I could have kids. I'm like, have been so on the fence, but seeing number one, how you like. If you want to have kids, you got to get off the fence and onto a uh, surrogate. Well, oh, this is after- You have frozen eggs, right? I do have frozen eggs. I know, mm -hmm. I read that. What is involved in freezing Thank eggs? You. Thank you about That's what? a compliment. Why are you <laughs> reading about a compliment? <laughs> Can I tell you something? The number of people, so David Spade, uh, always gonna give credit where credit do, is due. He says about this podcast, I'm so excited to be a guest on, but he always says, he's like doing comedians podcasts is like jury duty. Well, I chased you down. It's like only a matter, of, but I would have said no, but uh, <laughs> if I didn't want to, um, but, uh, he says it's like jury duty. It's like only a matter of time. Like you can postpone it, but you're gonna have to do your friend's podcast at some point. But gonna... as Bill Cosby always says, no doesn't mean no. No doesn't mean no, but <laughs> no. it's like also if you don't hear no, cause she's asleep. Then it's Fair good. Game. I, I didn't hear no, Fair game. I didn't hear it. <laughs> but uh, what I was gonna say I'm is- I'm freezing. You froze your eggs. Mm -hmm. I had to on the road, bring a syringe with me and Wait. a freezer oh. bag. Cause you have to give yourself shots for like, I don't know, two months or something. Wait, and and do eggs? 
I'm, I'm, when you freeze your eggs, it's. Uh -huh. I love that you're this asking about this and willing to being so confounded because I had to move a stand up date. I realized how little people understand about this, myself included, when I signed up to do it because I had to cancel. I was doing the Irvine Improv, working on new stuff. I was like, had the whole weekend sold out and I had to cancel a date. I felt so bad. And the next day I came in, they're like, oh my God, are you okay? We heard that you had your uterus removed. No. <laughs> and I was like, no, I froze my eggs. And they're like, are you, do you need a sweater? Like they were so confused about it. But I'm that. confused. Me too. I, I know that, that the eggs can live. I've been at a, uh, for a show I did, we went to a, uh, one of those clinics. For a show you yeah, performed? We went to a farm. You performed we went to a chicken at, a, farm. at a clinic? Not for a stand-up show. <laughs> oh, oh. <Idiot. laughs> I did the show called Frozen Mo Eggs. I did, <laughs> remember we did Mobbed on on Fox. Oh yeah, yeah, the Flash yeah, yeah. Mob show. There was yes. a woman who was uh, it was in in <laughs> in vitro had been in vitro and that we, is a good idea though. Putting a Planned Parenthood right next to a comedy club is a great idea. Wait, why? <laughs> because why? Of the number of women that get have sex with comics and probably need to get it handled. <laughs> You don't have a lot of sex with comics. You I have to... never dated a comic. You've Why? never dated never a comic. I didn't ask about dating. I oh, sorry. No, sex. never. I did. Uh, I've slept with one comic that uh, is an English comedian. So it doesn't count. It doesn't not count. <laughs> it's just not one of our. I do. Oh, you not. mean British? You don't mean an English-speaking comedian. British. Right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. I spoke to one. I, I fucked one English <laughs> comic. <laughs> Sorry. He's from Tampa. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, you're really calling him out now? I would never do it within my sphere. I have this thing, and I don't know if you do as well. Maybe it's, you know, some Darwinian survival instinct where I did really luck out that I never slept with comics. I mean, everyone said that I did. So it's the kind well, of don't thing. Don't say that. And I'm not Straight saying, up. I'm not looking to get laid. I'm, I'm happily oh. married. This is my daughter. I know. But don't say you're very lucky you never slept with comics because there's comics that they shouldn't feel unlucky. It's not that. It's more... I got to be friends with comics oh. and I know myself. And if I had like fallen in love with a comic and felt rejected by, or I knew at that time I was a talk in relationships, I was toxic. Like I had the love addiction thing. I was just, if I would have ruined my place, the only place that I feel safe, the comedy store and comedy venues, you know, I would have ruined the one thing that is keeping me alive, which is doing stand up. you know? So I think I knew on some level I could fall in love with all of you guys, you know, but I have to make this, you guys gotta be my brothers, you know? Okay. Otherwise, it's gonna get. But are there are certain parts with... of America where people are fucking their brothers. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I agree. Yeah. Are they actually friends with you? Silence is gold. You know, no, I just can't. <laughs> I I made jokes about being from West Virginia, and I got in so I got in so much trouble. Uh, I love how you pre-edited. We don't have to edit. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something that mm -hmm. was going to get you canceled, yet we kept a blank, quiet space. We, I want to tell you that we didn't dial it down. Mm -hmm. That was you <laughs> self-editing in the moment. It's comedians can't have restraint. We can't like, I think that's the new thing that this is going to be the new Darwinism for comedians. The ones that know when to fucking bite their tongue, even if you have a banger joke. You know when to bite your tongue? Yes. You, you don't. No, I don't. I but I, I have I don't do anything really live anymore too mm -hmm. much because I'm afraid of me. I'm afraid of because I like what I get and I like what I do. And uh, I like people who aren't behold. I like I, I'm, I'm fascinated with like Bill Burrs and, the, and, and those people who aren't be really beholden or, or, you know, Chappelle who aren't beholden to a network. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also what happened was I am into radical accountability and comedians were like, we can't say anything anymore. And you're like, well, you're also saying your jokes to people that didn't sign up to listen to Joe on Twitter at two o'clock in the afternoon. Why are you giving jokes out for free to someone else to deliver? So jokes aren't just written out unless you're Mitch Hedberg, unless you're Stephen Wright and like they're meant to be performed. So a joke, 50% of it is what's written and you're letting other people perform your jokes poorly and they're doing it shitty. So if you're saying- The so mic is right up against you and you're rubbing your <laughs> breast on the- I can't hear you through your breast. Um, <laughs> no, so, but as you were gesturing, there was- Yes, no, I get it. I know, I always have a, a you'd think I would have figured this out by now. <sighs> um, and uh, so I, I like taking radical accountability, going like, yeah, why are we 
posting abortion jokes at noon for someone to and have no control over how it's received because our job as comedians is to go da 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 abortion joke and then we read the room and go okay guys 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 like we it's our job to like clean up that mess and ascertain and read the room and decide okay I'm not going to open with this I'm but that open. happens in the room too that yes but I mean I think that comedians right now we're uh I think putting ourselves in this situation a little bit because we're tweeting at two in the afternoon on a Tuesday and someone's at work uh, scrolling on Twitter. I don't know who everyone follows. So my abortion joke or my rape joke or whatever it is could between, be between 10 kids, toddlers just shot at a school and Trump is running again. Right. Like that's not where I want a joke. Like So that ruins your rape joke. You're saying rape if these kids would just stop dying, I <laughs> could, could, you could do talk, my rape jokes. You again. could tell the funny side of rape. I mean, <laughs> the irony is that they're probably all products of rape. Let's be honest, but like, still, right. the, I I'm really big on us just taking the power back and going right. like, you know what? I'm gonna wait to say that in front of comedy fans or my fan people that know what I'm doing. People that don't. I think a lot of we're pushing comedy on a lot of people that just are not comedy fans and that's fine I if someone it. tried to make me watch sports i'd be like i don't like this stop doing this so you talk know? about talk but, about your eggs i want to know more about your eggs how do you get eggs how do you get your eggs out how do you and where do you put them on the road you have an they're ice in chest? redondo beach she doesn't get her own eggs out no but she said she took a little plastic bag on the road is that to catch the eggs <laughs> no what i'm i'm being serious i don't understand what you're doing no we use a frying pan um <laughs> so i agree with you on all of this i didn't know either so when i was 33 god this was some i just turned 40 uh i sat down i was like i'm not i don't need to think about kids da, da, da. and uh dr andy wong he's on the he's the kardashians fertility person made me realize he goes the technology is now available that you can freeze for 10 years and you can dethaw the eggs without freezer burn ruining the eggs so if you don't want to have a, Five years ago, if you wanted to freeze eggs and right. get pregnant at 43, I'd say don't do it yet. But your 33-year-old eggs are gonna be better than your 40-year-old eggs. Freeze them now and we can dethaw them when you're 43. But is not is the problem uh, with getting pregnant My at 43? Is a problem, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're very funny. <laughs> but is, the, is the problem with the eggs, is the problem with the eggs and not the fact that you'll be carrying at 43? It, with your body, with your- A couple things. Number one, the eggs are always gonna be, because as soon as you hit puberty, you start losing eggs. So everyone's like, men are so sexist, and men are, maybe, but nothing is more sexist than women's own biology. Our bodies are sexist. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They want us to get pregnant at like 13, 14, 15. It's weird that that's when you're your most fertile. When you're, you know what I mean? Like when you're you're, you're least useful or least capable of being a parent. So, it, and a little girl grows up, just our, our society says at a certain point, you. You get married and you have kids. Yeah. And here you are, you chasing a career. You weren't, you weren't, you're not interested. I've in been engaged. Um, it didn't work out. I, I, I am totally fine. Uh, I would like, give me a reason and I'll do it. A reason to what? Get to, married. Like get oh, married. Yeah. You don't I'll, have to get married. married to have I'm different than having kids. And I'm not going to, it's true. I'm not going to sign anything. That's my deal. I will wear the ring. We can have a big party, whatever you want. I'm just not, I'm you not. You don't want the license. I don't want, I just don't want to get the government involved. I see so many friends of mine going through nightmare divorces that should have just been a great eight year marriage. I think, I don't think- So our you life would never fuck a senator? No. Because you don't want the government to- I'm good. <laughs> comics and senators. Yeah. It's very similar. It's amazing how many comics I think, I mean, I- So it, how many eggs do you have? 18. Uh, a, one of them had Down syndrome. Uh, they, can, they can actually- Yeah, they can tell. And so they just throw it out. You know, I was like, well, how do you know I didn't want that? Um, and uh, <laughs> so basically what happens is, okay, so you go, you basically get pregnant. That's what it is. So they jam up all your eggs. So they get bigger, 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 bigger. You get like four months pregnant, basically. Based uh, on what? Like, are you injecting yourself with sperm? Yeah, I'm injecting myself. <laughs> Hormones. <laughs> I feel like yeah. we need to back up to like the birds and the bees. Well, I don't, I don't you're, know. I'm, uh, you're I'm really... you're, no, no, no. You're, um, the sperm comes later. So later, if you want. so the sperm I get, comes later. Comes, it does what come are you in. putting in? You, you, if you're fertilizing Hormones, your so estrogen, egg. Estrogen, estrogen, estrogen. But can an egg be fertilized without sperm? It's not fertilized. That would be an embryo. So I might freeze oh. embryos later this year, but I would oh. need a sperm. Are you, no, do I'm you volunteers there. tribute? <laughs> Are you asking me for my sperm in front of my daughter? <laughs> Can you imagine? My, my brother wants kids and he, I He's don't right know. He's right there. Yeah. Is brother. he the one that's rich from the mouth guard game? Yeah. yeah. Alex. Yes. Alex. Alex, you, yes. Can you send a cup of sperm <laughs> yes. in? Yes. 
My brother really wants kids. Whitney wants really? your sperm. But Polly Shore's making a play. He really is. He really is with me. Yeah. Is that is that a possible thing? I don't know. Wait, you won't have sex with a comic, but you will (laughs) have kids. But you want to give birth to a weasel. (laughs) Weasel juice. (laughs) Weasel juice. Sure. (laughs) Literally. Um, Um, Wait, that's why I was going to ask you before. Can I really, really fast? Don't don't make it fast. I was going to ask you before because you said you decided just to be friends with these comics. Are they friends with you, or do you think they want more? Like Polly is making a play. I would say. Male comedians pretty much love me across the board. I would say I'm a beloved. You are person. Yeah, I. Uh, I. But you're incredibly attractive. Th- got what I needed. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> um, thank you. I think that comics, like I, I was, I definitely had the opportunity to date them, maybe, or you know, it made sense a lot because it's like we are together all the time. We're on the road. We're on tour. But it just, I had some. Number one, I never know when someone's flirting with me. And number two, I think once I see, once you see the way comedians kind of behaved in their 20s, you're not like, I want to be with you. You know what I mean? I'm, what about how you behaved in your 20s? Well, when I was in my 20s, I didn't really date much. I mean, I would, I was kind of more of a serial monogamous, but all I did was work. Yeah, I'm sure people weren't like, I want to be with this workaholic who's delusional and thinks she can have TV shows. Like, I'm sure that was probably a deterrent. So, so the plan is you have, how many eggs? 18? 18. 18. 18. You had 19, but you threw one out. One was retarded. Okay. That's you know that you can't you know use that word. I can because it was mine. Oh, well, you're right. <laughs> it was my retarded egg. If I want to call it that, I can. Okay. Here's the thing about that. No one's calling people with Down syndrome retarded. You just did. I don't think an egg's a people. Oh, good, oh, good, good save. Why did you just make it a they, them? Yeah, was it non-binary? <laughs> right, okay. But I'm I just, just mean I'm like- I'm learning so much. But I'm just saying, but from comedy, it's like just the idea of like, you know, not that I'm encouraging to use the word retarded. I'm more think that the people that get mad about it are being retarded because you know we're not calling <laughs> Boy, people with down, down syndrome retarded. You you're, never call a stupid person stupid. You call a smart person stupid when they're being stupid, you know? Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> So confused. Like, don't make, don't, I want to be able to abuse smart people every now and then, but be like, you're being retarded. Like, I mean, do you remember growing up? I'm just saying, all I want to say is that <laughs> no one will address ageism. Okay? okay. No one, no one's mad about that. When we were, when I was in high school, if someone was being dumb, you'd be like, Duh. like, we did that. Right. Like, yeah. all, right. my teachers did it. Right. My it's- coaches would be like, you mean fucking idiot. And like, I'm not saying that was right, but that just give us a second. <laughs> we know it's it was funny. Right. It was wrong. Right. Fine. Right. Give me a second to course correct. Right. Yeah. But we live in a different time right also, now. Also, just your intentional. Of course, we live in a different time. Right. Every time a day passes, we're at a different time. Like, fi- like when it went from secretary to assistant, like, was there like a month, like, leniency period? Do you know what I mean? No. He used to be secretary. Now mm-hmm. we say assistant. Well, you can't say secretary anymore. I know, but during the no, when, he didn't. No, know that. I didn't he's know asking. that. He didn't I, know I that. didn't know that. He's still <laughs> he's still in secretary. <laughs> I don't have a secretary, but I don't I don't know. Like I've never said take a note, take a Do letter. You have an assistant? I, no, I've no, no. me. You me. don't know the me. answer. <laughs> Whether I have an assistant? Me. Mo- okay, how much money? Liquid, are yeah. we talking here? <laughs> that you don't know if you have an assistant or not? No, no, no. I don't call me. anybody an assistant. Okay. I, I have people like I'll you say. You call them help. The help. The help. <laughs> no, you don't. I have them call me the. You don't have an assistant. I don't. No. I don't have an assistant. Aww. No. Aww. Well, don't, feel, don't, feel, Aww. don't feel bad for No, me. it's not. It's it's so endearing. That's just very endearing. No, I have people that do different things, whether they're producing, whether they're, uh, you take care of my travel, travel. you know, yeah. um, that's my daughter. Is that an assistant? No. So what is- You should wh- charge for that. You have an assistant. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead serious. Do you have you an assistant? You are giving away free labor. Yes. No. Uh, uh, yes. Yes. No, he pays yeah. me. I have an what? assistant. You pay me to no. do his travel. Oh, good. I yeah. pay her. Good. Yeah. I well. do. Well. <laughs> Yeah. Are you, you're not happy with what I'm giving no, you? No, it's not that hard of a job. He barely travels anymore. He won't go on a plane anymore. I'm I take so tomorrow. much joy in breaking up happy families. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter is going to leave me? The goal is that you two never speak again. <laughs> Whitney Cummings was on the podcast and tore our family apart. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, but so yeah, the idea with the eggs is I have frozen eggs. It just buys me some time because because what happens is a woman when you're in your like early 30s, it's like or late 20s even, is you start settling. Your bar gets lower and you're lower. You're like, I don't really want to marry this guy, but I only have two years left. I guess I can like buy him a new wallet so he doesn't have a chain wallet. Like <laughs> you start just, you know what I mean? You start being like, he does wear rosaries, but like, <laughs> I guess I can just change that at some point, you know? So you start going lower, lower, lower. And then all of a sudden you're 35 and you're just like, I guess I'm gonna marry this person. That's but six. even if you don't marry, don't you feel like or you're gonna be attached, attached to the sperm that invades your egg? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, Violently. I, I work with, I work with uh, um, Sophia Vergara. I you worked with Sophia, I, did a, I directed a movie she was in. You direct, you write, you produce, you are a, a bon vivant. The uh, onion guy, the, the onions guy, you mean? The, the guy that made the onion chips? And, and, and then they froze Suter. embryos together and then sued her to try and to get then, child support. And then not only that, after that, he had a lawyer hired in for, Louisiana. The, for the embryo. So this is, let me, for people that don't know, just really quick, uh, uh, Sofia Vergara, she froze embryos with a guy that essentially his business was making the Pepsi of Funyuns. Okay. It was a salad topper that was dried onions. Okay. okay. And... <laughs> I don't know what you're clearing I up love, here. It's important. <laughs> Why is that? Ready? Are you I, ready? I'm ready. So am I. So, um, you know, this episode is uh, brought to you by Zipix Toothpicks. Oh, that's my favorite. Uh, Zipix. I'm actually going to uh, <laughs> try one. I'm going to, I'm actually going to, do you want one? Yeah, that one tastes really good. By the way. Yeah, they have. There's so many different ones, but this one is watermelon and peppermint, and it gives me energy. It's got uh, caffeine. Yeah. Well, you grab your own. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Zipix oh. brings you a totally satisfying, convenient, and flavorful way to curb cravings and relax with two milligram and three milligram options. And remember when massive vape clouds, ashtrays, and dip spits were awesome? No. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> well, now there's an easier, less messy, and more subtle way to curb cravings with Zipix toothpicks. Because you can get your caffeine fix, you can get your, well, anything, nicotine fix, yeah. whatever you need from here. But you want to know this is so delicious? I want to mm. eat it, but you shouldn't eat Zipix. You should just use it to yeah, suck on it. and <laughs> clean your teeth. And, and I think I look cool now. I think I should do entire podcasts. You look like a trucker man. <laughs> is that cool? A trucker man. Yeah. I well, look like a trucker man. Well, the best part about Zipix is that you can really use them just about anywhere, right? We're right. using them here on the po podcast. Zipix toothpicks are long lasting and available in six delicious flavor choices. Plus you can stop exposing your lungs, lungs to smoke and vape This fog. one's bourbon flavored. Yeah. Wow. So I'm having a drink and I'm getting caffeine and B12. So this is healthy. Yeah. Okay. It's the oral gratification and amazing flavors that keep you coming back for Zipix. And they only sell their toothpicks online, making them one of the most cost-effective alternatives available. I'm telling you, I'm really enjoying this. Good. I'm not saying it because I'm in the middle of a commercial. Good. I'm enjoying this. Okay. All right. All right. Do you want me to finish the commercial? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, you saw it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to find it yourself, okay? So you go to zipixtoothpicks.com today and use the code Howie, my name, to save 10% off of your order. So you got to do that now. I'm telling you, you're going to love that. That's, That's zipixtoothpicks.com, promo code Howie. Must be 21 or older to order. Zip more, smoke less with Zipix toothpicks. I love this. Mm -hmm. You know what else I love? What? Going back to the podcast. Me too. <laughs> it's how did important Funyun, how did that Funyuns... is women, we heed red flags. That's <laughs> I, that's it. Do you realize in the last 10 minutes you've uh, mentioned rape and Funyuns? <laughs> <laughs> that usually doesn't ever come up. What's in the more same... Funyun than rape? <laughs> right. Um, I would literally rather get raped than eat a Funyun. <laughs> really? Yes. I wouldn't put that out there. I would not put that out there. You know, because that's Here like we gonna... are. <laughs> because... It, it, Oh, okay, never mind. I don't want to talk Explain about that. It, this can, is what episode of your podcast? <laughs> the last. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm so excited about this podcast because you realize that most podcasts are men talking about their depression. It is such a fucking pussy dryer upper. It's like you get people, why do you have kids? Why don't you get married? Because men now are talking about their feelings on podcasts for three hours. How am I supposed to procreate <laughs> with any of you? 
You're actually funny on your podcast. So I'm keeping you wet? <laughs> oh my God. No, I mean it in a professional way. I just, you know what I'm saying, a, right? I, you ask her. You ask her. Okay, we're, is my okay, dad, he, is he we're in a drought. Wet? We're in a drought. It is not my fault my pussy's dry. Ask her. Is my dad keeping you wet? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that like a clip we're using now? Is that the opener? <laughs> sure. Yes, please. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you talking no, about? No, go on. Are you on. talking about hear... Whitney's At pussy? least there's yeah, some wanna... moisture in California. I, w- <laughs> I want to hear more about no the No drought story. there. The, uh, the <laughs> funny Look at her guy. legs are crossed. <laughs> so you take the eggs, right? And then it takes some pressure off you. So you're like, okay, I don't have to date, you know, guys that, um, you know, uh, like Coldplay, like I don't have to do this. You know what I mean? I don't have to keep talking myself into these guys. That but you're Phoenix. always dating. I'm always dating, kind of. You're dating yeah. right now, aren't you? I'll dating take, a vet? I am. I am. You're an animal. You're both animal lovers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We met. He saved my dog's life. That's yeah. how we met. And then you fell in love. Yes. And he's uh, cur- yeah. Currently, we're like dating. Yeah, we're dating. What were you thinking? Well, well I don't the, understand. We met during the pandemic and got very like entrenched. And then it was like, okay, what is entrenchment, entrenchment when in the single life? It's when you don't know where you end and they begin. And when you kind of start recreating your childhood circumstances and uh, start caretaking each other and more confused now that you're answering this question. Other. <laughs> were you, do you cohabitate? We did during the pandemic and now we are not cohabitating. We're going to kind of start from scratch and just date again. To try is that to good or is that two it. steps backwards? Uh, I think it's most people go a little too fast before actually knowing each other, which is why I think there's so much divorce. It's like we have this thing in our heads like we've been together two years. Let's get married. It's like two years is when you first start getting. I want to make sure. Sh- but you were together. I know. And then you said, the let's take it to the next level. Get out. Yeah, but the first two years is pretending. So you fall in love with me. And then now let's see if you still like me after I'm. You live with me and you see that I sometimes am a little more complicated. But if it didn't work out when you guys were together, Mm -hmm. what makes you think that moving forward, if you decide to live together again, that Mm. would be any different? I'm very rich. Okay. (laughs) So (laughs) I think he'd figure it out. I don't know. (laughs) Um, No, it's this. It's we met during the pandemic. This is the first time. Like, there's no blueprint for people that met during the pandemic and like trauma bonded. There's a little bit like, no, remember there were all these couples that like, met on 9-11 and like got married a year later and then divorced a year later. So yeah, we met on 9-11. Like, of course, we like had this crazy trauma bond and we're like, you're my soulmate. It's because you thought you were about to die, you know? So it's like, we met also under circumstances that felt very immature. He met me at a time that was not representative of my like normal behavior. Like we weren't touring. I thought, I thought comedy But was, ha, didn't you just come out of a relationship? You were engaged right before I that. I was engaged before that, yeah, about so a year you, before. So he's a, he's a rebound. Maybe. So is my husband. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think it's nice to have contrast right away, to be like, that was the person I thought I was gonna be with, and you meet someone else, and you're like, oh, great, you have something to compare it to directly. I don't know if that, like, being a rebound is necessarily um, um, factors into whether something works out or not. Are you, you know a serial? I, mean? I think it's the age you are, maybe more. Are you a serial date? Like you will go jump from one relationship to another? I used to in my 20s. So I was in recovery for love addiction. Uh, so oh. I used to do all that sketchy shit. you believe that? Yeah. It's the way your dopamine receptors hold. It's basically a remix of, you know, how you were parented and what you saw as a child. And then- You come it, from a divorce? Yeah. Uh-huh. You think a couple. That- I come from like a lot of love addiction and sex addiction. Yeah. Wait, you're, who'd you grow up with? Your mom or your dad? Um, both, and then my aunts in Virginia, and then back to just my mom. Can you be addicted to love? Yes. I mean, who doesn't want to be loved yes. or love? But it's not about that. It's like the same thing with alcohol. So, right? So if you can have two drinks after a meal, great. And then two, right? But love addiction is like, I need you around me all the time. Uh, and you get entrenched and like obsessed and you can't think about anything else except the other person and controlling the other person's behavior. It's, it's, it's kind of... um all these like sort of domestic spats where people like kill their wives and like usually that boils down to love addiction. It's just not something that's like talked about. And you went to recovery for this? Uh, yeah, I went into a, a 12 step uh, program, yeah. Locked away someplace? Uh, like, no, I mean, you, like because that home? would be hot and that's confusing. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, lock me up with a man. Cause I he, always thought like sex addiction is a sex addiction. Mm-hmm. When you hear guys say that, mm-hmm. I thought, what a fucking great excuse. You know, totally. I wasn't cheating. I was not cheating. I'm mm-hmm. an addict, honey. Yep. It depends. So it's like, you know, like food addiction. Am I supposed to be wearing these? 
Yeah. You can. Shit, yeah. sorry. <laughs> this is the first time she's, for those that God. are just listening, <laughs> she's not podcast, wearing headsets. So guys. she hasn't heard any of the questions, yet she's been able to answer. <laughs> this is why you're, we're so having a hard time communicating. Okay, oh God, is that what I sound like? Ugh. That is you. I'm so sorry. No, you sound good. <laughs> sorry, are, you, are you very critical of yourself? Um, I think I'm critical in a way that is uh, productive enough to yield uh, positive success in my life, but not so much that it's a, a liability. I think okay. I have a healthy ability to uh, be constructively critical of myself. But you're also very open as far as, I, mean, I find that fascinating about you. I've been, I, I've followed you for years now. And you know, I, the first time I think I noticed you uh, uh, was on Chelsea Handler. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next thing on I her was- show. Yes. <laughs> And the next thing I noticed was we were in Whitney World where your you were your show was being launched. That was almost the title of the show. Whitney, Whitney World. Whitney World. That's what NBC wanted to call it. Is that what they wanted Dan to call it? Dan Levy, brilliant comedian this year, who was a writer on, on Yeah, Whitney. he's a writer yeah. and a very funny comic. Brilliant. And, and uh hi Dan. Brilliant. You were welcome to come in and see was on the He was on the show with me. He witnessed all that. He was there the day that but you they, at the that same they time. put me in a banana costume and I had to dance for uh, what? During the to promote the show. The fronts. Well, it, yeah, I mean, I had to do, like, they made me so annoying. Like, I was so, like, football would come, I was inescapable. Like, football would come, I didn't know what I was doing. Dan, what? Wait, no, it wasn't it, it, what, what it was. Hey, Dan, maybe go change your shorts and come back? Or? <laughs> no, no, no. What? what is that? Uh, coffee? No, I no love I'm talking shorts. about your shorts. Oh, these are amazing uh, shorts. You guys do not bully Bye. a trans person. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Bye. By, 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 by John Elliott. I'm open for sponsorship. They're great. The little, little tiger print. A tiger uh, print shorts. Yeah, tiger print shorts. Yeah. Not a lot of people do tiger. Like I've seen leopard. The last time, the last guy I saw wearing shorts like that was Siegfried around the pool <laughs> at the uh, Mirage. Remember that? About 20 years ago, he used to sit around the pool like last that. Last time I saw um, someone wear that, it was Tony the Tiger on a cereal box. <laughs> uh, they're, they're great also. And I, I love magic. So. Um, anyways, you know what I say? The so, shorts or, or the Siegfried and Roy? Siegfried and Roy. Oh, I, I, I thought I, the shorts are great and I love magic. Because <laughs> <No, laughs> when I wear these I, shorts, I magic happens. <laughs> so really quick, Dan is married to the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Uh, they've been married happily for what, 15? 12 years. 12 years, yes, okay. But it seems like 15. Feels yeah. like 15. <laughs> Has three gorgeous kids. Uh, and um, I compare him to like, remember the character in MASH who would wear a dress to try to get sent home? Jamie Farr. So he does this to try to get her to divorce him. Like, <laughs> I don't know how, true. like, why do you dress like this? It's wild. Because uh, he doesn't all, have a full length hair. <laughs> first of all, I love my style. And, I like uh, it. Right? You, I like it. Yeah. And we're wearing similar shoes. Yeah, too. We, we, we have a similar look. Yeah. yeah. That, you're dressed like I my daughter. I don't know if that's <laughs> a compliment. Like Dan, <laughs> Dan buys most of his clothes at Claire's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I do have the vibe of a 26 year old lesbian. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> um, but this is all I wanted to By say. The way, no, I don't want to interrupt. I just want to say it's one thing. Uh, wait, wait, don't you go as Rachel? Maddow? Yeah, I do. I, I am a great Rachel Maddow. <laughs> you do. You yeah. do look like Rachel. I am a great Rachel Maddow. <laughs> now you got to watch this on YouTube, people, because he is Rachel Maddow. We should have I a side Rachel by Maddow. side. Is there some I, way that's to do what it? I am. Yeah. That's what I am. How were you able to come up with the idea for Shit's Creek? How did you do that? Oh, here's what happened. Um, I was hanging out with my dad. <laughs> yeah. And I said, Dad. And I realized what? I was gay. I was like, let's do a people show. People confuse you with Dan Levy, not because of the name, because you also seem gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason. Yes. Uh, Dan Levy, star of Shit's Creek. Dan Levy, star of a Domino's commercial. <laughs> Cheeseburger pizza in 2002. <laughs> Thank you. But it Dan did not created, air. Dan created the brilliant show Indebted uh, on NBC also that was Fran Drescher. Yeah, it was Fran Drescher and we brought her back and then it got canceled, <laughs> that's okay. It was still fun. You got a show on the air and yeah. you got two shows on the air yes. in one year. Yes. You And you wrote on them, right? Yes. You, you were... So what I was trying to correct you is when we were doing this promo when she was wearing a banana costume, oh. it was because remember when they had the ads at the bottom of the screen Yeah. and people yeah, would pop lower, up? The lower third. Lower third ads. For people that don't know, when you're watching TV on network, they want to promote the what's coming up, mm -hmm. and they have the stars of upcoming shows show up and wave and move silly in the bottom of the TV. Imagine watching the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and already thinking I'm kind of annoying. Like that girl, we got it. We'll get to you. Like, and then like I dance across the screen in a banana costume <laughs> during the like third down. Like, was... and we wonder why men want to fucking murder me. <laughs> Yeah, you, so th that's, I don't think that's you have a weird opinion of how men look at you. Yeah, people love you. 
Um, but I think what was happening was they Unless thought you're using that, murder as that a would euphemism. Help. For <laughs> fuck. So they put her in all these weird costumes. Then she danced about the screen. Then it came on. And people people were not huge fans of the ad campaign. It was not our idea. I was the first person that was like canceled. I was. I was for the what? first. I just mean like I was the first person. I mean, you look back. I, honestly, Esther Pravitsky is who pointed this out to me. She was like. If Esker were, Pervitsky pointed this out? Yes. <laughs> okay, we're about to have- 49% Jewish, I can ex, do this. Extra P Esther, Esther Pervitsky moment. <laughs> Go ahead. I just mean, she's a comic. She came oh, on my I podcast and I did, I have so much embarrassment about that whole time because I was so publicly embarrassed. Like it was like, t trashing people on Twitter was like pretty new. I was trashed by like some people I read, like Alex Sulkin and like writers that I really respected. I was, it became this punchline. I was like, they made fun of me on SNL. It was like, the dreams that I had was like, oh, like SNL is making fun of me. Like I'll never get to do that. You know what I mean? Like it was just like. But it, you don't see that as a badge of honor? I think I do now, but I always wanted to be in the club and I became the thing the cool kids made fun of. And I, no. and I think I thought I was. I think that you feel that as a magnet coming toward you. I don't think that's true. I'm, I, as somebody from the outside, I don't think so. Because mm -hmm. as somebody who was the punchline, for so many years, you know, in in David Letterman's top ten, it was always, you know, I was pre Carrot Top, who was always right. getting killed. I right. don't feel like you were ever that person. I feel like you felt that you're a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 felt that at the time because it was so. What are you wiping I'm so much? Sorry, She's crying. You make right. me wet in many ways. Sally. <laughs> are you having a problem? Do no, you want tissue? I don't. She... It's weird that I'm getting emotional because I I like I just had fuck. I just had something happened to me that was like so mean online and I saw it and like I engaged with the person which was so stupid but it was like I never like the amount of shit I like hate I get is so intense and I never acknowledge it and I never talk about it but like Why I guess you're looking under there tissues, we don't go have get tissues. it right there I guess okay. every now and then I um here I'll do it I think every now and no then we'll get it we'll get it to you I think every now and then, I think when I'm around people, like I love that, that I know won't like judge me or like make fun of me. Like, um, it, there's a lot of emotion that I never like process from all that, you know, because it was like, you know. Why well, are you so affected by something that's saying that's that is said to you online? It I don't check it a lot. I think. Um, well, what is it? Do you want to talk about what it is? That's sure, what, sure, 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 sure. Um, like I think people think my life is like so easy or something and that I have like money or whatever. So they're just like, I can just be a total punching bag or maybe it's cause I did the roasts. Like, I don't know, because like when I first started doing the roasts, you know, it, cause we're the most sensitive people in the world that really are just signing up to make people laugh. We fuck up a lot. We miss, that's fine. You know, uh, but we get paid to try to entertain people. So when people are not getting paid and their hobby is just to trash the people that are trying to spread joy, it's like, it, it, it sucks a little bit. Cause then I go like, well, who am I doing this for? Like, why well, am you're I doing, doing it this? for all the people that love it, need it yeah. and get a laugh and a smile. But the truth of the matter is- Like who's mean to a clown? Like, what do you, I'm a clown. We're clown, like I'm a clown. Everybody, I don't think, I don't mean think they're mean to Everybody, and let me just explain something. By virtue of just deciding to be a public figure, what I've learned, and I'm a lot older than you, young lady, is that you have created the, the I've world. I've been dead for seven years, <laughs> 86. The, the world is angry. And that's the other thing. People, everyone accused me of lying about my age. It's like, when you're accused of lying a lot. Do you give a fuck? Are you lying? Here's, she does. Here, here's why comedians, we're the only people that don't lie. And that, that I take umbrage at. And here's the other thing. Comedy, by virtue of what comedy is, you know the comedy only comes from negativity. It is only negative. That's why comedy and tragedy is together. If you're laughing at a clown falling down in the circus, you're laughing at the misfortune of somebody you don't know. Mm. If you're laughing at somebody getting a pie in the face, it's because just the, the, the average joke of two guys walking to a bar, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be a joke unless oh. something shitty, awkward, or embarrassing happens to one of them. That's why we laugh. So it all comes from negativity. That being said, comedy mm -hmm. aside, just being on TV, I'll give you an example. When I first shaved my head, people come up to me, not only online, but in person and go, it would stand there right to my face and go, why would you shave your head? You had a beautiful head of hair. I don't like you like this. Well, who, who in their right mind thinks that it's okay to walk up to a stranger and say, I don't like your hair. Or, you know, you look so much skinnier mm -hmm. in person than you do on TV mm -hmm. or you're fatter or you're, 
people are just and they and, feel really close to us. Yeah. Pardon me. They feel very close to us. Uh, you, no, no, no. That's the wrong st statement because the point is the people that are close to you. My mother would never say it to me. They would never. But say you know it. what it is. I sorry. I I, I mean. From podcasting, I have noticed since I've done podcasting, it's a different thing. People feel so close to you because they spend three hours a week with you just hanging out. And then, uh, but yes, when people did it before, it felt more like disrespect. This one is like, well, you're open for feedback. You talk about your own flaws. So let me help you. I can add some. What did they say to you to hurt you? Uh, oh, the thing online. It was just like, you know what it is? It's so, it's so dumb. And I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. I just had, I like put it off. The way he did a video uh, making fun of uh, after I shot my last special, I know it's sixty minutes of pure jokes. The special is called jokes. Jokes. Netflix, it is just your fifth jo special. It is literally just jokes. And at the end, it was right after uh, Chris Rock had been assaulted on stage, and no one did anything. No right. one, like no one, did anything. Which I, was hit me to the core. On go some ahead. level, I defend the people in the audience because you got to go. Okay, what sample of people is that? Number one, it's a bunch of people that probably come from some kind of fucked up environment where you kind of, your trauma response is to freeze. I get it. I understand. The, uh, I Being there, I'm sure I would have frozen and been very confused. And then you're like, I'm on camera. If you're white and the person breaking up two black people, that that's going to be, an, you know what I mean? It's like, who was going to do it? Do you right, know? right, right. No, I who get it. Who would have? Everything you're saying makes sense. Denzel Go ahead. could have, like, it, it was such a fucked up situation that, you know, but for someone to not go, that was just, assault like f like flat out um no one cared right. and then the Chappelle thing happened and then uh, you know I don't talk about this publicly I don't want to give it any more oxygen but like I have people waiting outside my show like I don't it doesn't matter but it, it is day I mean I have a wild amount of security like I have people that have to do the threat assessments I have people that think they're married to me I have people that have machine guns in their house and hunting licenses that we like just have to know you know I had someone show up at a show wearing one handcuff and then he put it on me and I, you know, so. I want to sneak out of the back after this podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just a very new, it's, you know. Okay, so go ahead. It is what it is. I say wild shit and like. What um, did you say in the special? A, a what did you health. say? At the end, didn't put it in the special. I said, hey guys, like, just thank you for coming to see live comedy. Because, you know, this, I know you could watch it on TikTok. I know you could watch it on YouTube. This is where we do what we do best. And, you know, we're in a situation now where we can't trust politicians. I know we probably never could before, but we're, you know, we can't trust the news anymore. We, it's really hard to find news that you really feel like does, isn't owned by Clorox or General Electric or some kind of bullshit, you know? Right. And I was like, now there's this spotlight on comedians to be like a moral authority figure. And like, we didn't sign up for this. Like we're kind of clowns and like, we're doing the best we can, but not all of us are Al Franken. You know, not right. all of us are, you know, political geniuses. We're kind of just saying, if I, the idea is that we shock people by saying stuff that you're not supposed to say. That's the, and it wasn't a funny little thing i was just saying thank you for coming please keep supporting live comedy even if you don't like all of us you coming here is what keeps us honest if right. you don't laugh we'll stop doing the joke i'm agreeing with everything you're saying but and loving need, what you're saying but so we need to we need you to come and let us bomb let us say like da 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 tranny and you don't laugh that's when we'll stop saying tranny right you know what i mean it's not funny great and then um this comedian played the audio saying this or whatever he's like an internet comedian this is watching stand-up comedy in 2020 and he pulled that from my Instagram. It wasn't in my special. Watching a stand-up show in 2020. And then it was like, like everyone was making fun of like, oh, comedians, it's like going to war. It's like, you guys are like soldiers out there. You're saving the day. Like just making fun of. But why does that, who is this person? Well, if he put a clip of my stand-up up uh -huh. and people said I'm not funny, that's fair. Are you serious? That's fair. See, that would bother me more me because more mad. he's not showing your comedy. <laughs> he said this is a Whitney stand-up. But he doesn't know. He's wrong. it makes wrong. me look like a fucking... Um, no, you're wrong. I asshole. can't tell you you're wrong for feeling the way you feel. Because I don't want people feeling... to go, oh, if I go to one of her stand-up shows, that's what I'm going to see. Has it hurt you? A person, uh, has it hurt your business? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 your business. Here's what the way I look at it. You know, when I first popped. And then he pinned it as, ma as his main. Because it got the most views. Fuck right? it. Pinning. It's, but it's gross. I it's was gonna growing. ask you his name. I don't want you to give his I name. Think comedians no, don't should give start his name. biting back. No. On no. shit like that. No, your best weapon I've, is fucking ignore it. Yeah, ignore don't it even forever. talk. You know what's gonna happen Where's... from this podcast? People are gonna look for that. 
Don't even fucking look for that. The point is, when I blew up, I sold out two nights in a couple of minutes at the two shows in one night at the at Radio City Music Hall. Before and, the internet. That's so much. No, but listen, listen to what That's I'm saying. Huge. So my, my point was that when uh, I've told this story almost on every podcast and I feel like I'm talking about me, but it's, but it, it speaks sure. to this. The, the point is that I looked out on uh, 7th Avenue as the first show was exiting and the next show was coming. It's 14,000 people milling in the streets and there's stanchions and there's all these cops. And my wife looks out the window with me and she goes, this is all for you. What are you thinking? And I was thinking in a city of 10 million, 9 million, 900 and you know, 91,000, 92,000 people didn't give a shit that I was yeah, here. Yeah, so the, <laughs> yeah. So, and they wouldn't yeah. buy a ticket, yeah. they're right here in yep. town and they don't yep. do that. So if one person, yep. I, I'm, I'm worried about you. It's not one person, it's a comic. Fuck them. I, I know. Yeah, we I are the meanest. about these people? I know, but I Whitney, think that you we don't We are know. the meanest. We, uh, yeah. the, the point is that a lot of us are the way we are because, and, and I'll just say, I didn't have a friend in the world is because we were hurt. We, we were yeah. traumatized and our bridge to sanity is laughter. And that's why when you look at the two masks of yeah. comedy and tragedy, they're very close mm -hmm. together. And you know something, uh, your persona, mm -hmm. uh, just from somebody, I don't really know you, yeah. but your persona is very tough, very uh, yeah. uh, funny, very witty, very biting. Yeah. And uh, for people to see that- I mean, that, I do cry on podcasts. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how <laughs> no, else that, to show people I'm- That's what I always say about her. She puts on this whole thing, like she is, she had not a whole thing, but it's like, that's been part of your brand, part of your persona but the truth is you're you know it's not a persona it's just me when i'm performing it's a performing you know but i'm I mean? saying you you no one you, can go on stage and be like i'm sensitive you'll get eaten alive you know you, so it's like but I, but but you're, you're going finish. to she let, she let me finish the compliment go ahead i was gonna say, was go gonna say that i just feel like she's the best person and oh, she's such a good sweet. person and she has a really you know uh, uh the biggest heart ever and i think people don't realize that these things do affect her but i wish she didn't have to be affected by them because but like, and she's here's the so, thing i'm gonna I'm Much worried for you all these because I, even be I'll tell you why I'm worried Sorry. for you because this <laughs> podcast, you telling that people love that, you know, trolls are there to poke and get, and if they see that they can make you cry, yeah, yeah. that even empowers them more. Yeah. Oh, you know what? If just showing that, yeah. I'm going to tell her because I don't like her. Mm -hmm. She's not funny. She's not, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to poke at you more. So you have to find some way to either ignore it, mm -hmm. to build uh, some armor against it. And to just go on, you're doing so much more good than. But I think it's important to know what your uh, third rail is. So for me, it's like, for someone, I work very hard, and my specials, the jokes per minute are. I, I'll go. You tell. I, I will. Listen, I think. But so, so you don't I'll, have to sell us. Stop. I know. I know. Stop but interrupting. I know, but <laughs> it's there's something that you have that. I can say you're this, you're this. There's something that you have that would be like, okay, that that's what hurts my feelings. Just specifically to me, given what I come from and whatever. When another comic is doesn't go, you know, they're not for me. I was the person when Dane Cook was getting fucking shit on. I was like, you don't have to like him, but the guys, if you say he's not funny, you're actually insulting his fans. You're actually, it, this is between you and his fans. You're saying they're dumb. You're saying they're idiots and they're paying eighty dollars to go see this thing. So. For me, it's like I get defensive because I go, when you say I'm not funny and all this bull, you're you're coming for the people that paid money to see me, and I have a I'm protective of them. So I think that's when it, I take that personal because you're saying my fans are dumb. The last thing I'll say is that's that's your just, fans I, don't care about this person. Yeah, it's totally. But you know, I think that I think it's comics. It's like every now and then, it's okay to go. Okay, I'm a punching bag within the comedy community. And every now and then you can go like, and that sucks. But like I'm, but tomorrow I'll be fine and won't we'll think. About I hope it. so. Yeah. Um. I. I. In the in the short time that we spend together, I do respect you, and I do think that you're a hard worker, and I think that you're an amazing craftsperson, and people who don't understand what it takes to not only have success but even sell a show. And yeah. then after sell a show, get a show to air. Yeah. Get two shows to air. Uh, get a series that ends yeah. up being on for seven years. Have your friends making livings because of your ideas and your collaborations and you, you. You, the, the amount. No, no, I don't have to. But it's I'm, also, I'm not, this is the other thing that, that, that this is just, I think we agree, but I'm not, maybe I'm not saying this properly. You know what bothers me? Sore winners. 
th- th- we live in an angry world. Yeah. And and people are angry, and this is not going to go away. Mm-hmm. So you know, I saw somebody say that you know shit happens, and you can't fix the shit that is yeah. happening, but you can fix yourself yeah. to be able to deal with the shit that's going to happen. You're never going to fix that guy who writes that. You're never going to fix the people who retweet it totally. and add to it. And they're suffering. And like I'm actually the but I you're mean, suffering. Yeah, totally. But I never cry. <laughs> You're a liar. I never cry. <laughs> I truly never cry. Really? Mm-mm. What's happening today? You make me wet. <laughs> We've been over this. <laughs> and on that note, I love you. Uh, I really, I, I got to too. know you. And, I'm and, glad, and I'm and glad I, it now happened I feel, here, actually. Really? Yeah, because I don't, my whole thing is like, you know, uh, I don't expect you to know any of this, but all on the podcast, it's all like we forgive others not because they deserve forgiveness because we deserve peace. We radically forgive everyone all the, all the time. They're doing the best they can with the tools they have. I can literally, liter- I'm that person. I'm like, if someone is mean to you, you need to hug them and love them. Like that's the, you know, but I just am in a 24 hour moment where I'm, my inner child is hurt and I'm not going to go shut the fuck up, bitch. You don't fucking know anything. That's what, how I was parented. So I'm kind of trying to like, if my inner child's feelings are hurt, just like let her. Well, hurt. you know, I've got, if I wasn't such a germaphobe, I'd give you a hug. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give her a hug. You should give her a hug. <laughs> Maybe that's but, why I was okay. She, she, she uh, no, COVID, so. I don't. I, I, I love you, Whitney. You I love are you. I you are love- such a gift to this world. Thank you. You for- make so many people laugh. You make so many people smile. You have good messages that the work you do with animals, the work you do with your friends, the work that you and just- And keeping that you, people, who's supportive of other people and supportive of other comics and what you expect of other people that you're doing is great. Cause you know what bothers me? I want comics to win. And I go, what you're doing, you're you're not gonna get what you want. But don't this. you want everybody to win? Yes. Wouldn't it be a good world yes. if everybody, I don't yeah. know that we're special. I just think this is the job that we have chosen. This is the job that has chosen us. This I is who- like to help comics get out of their own way because I know I know what they're doing and I like wanted to call this guy and go, hey dude, this isn't it. I, I know this is funny now, but you're ne- you're gonna stay angry forever because you're never gonna get what you want because you're doing this. You're self-destructing, you're self-sabotaging. You know, when I see people self-sabotage, I just, I get like, I wanna help them get out of there, you know, because that's what I think when comics end up blowing their brains out later and we lose them. All I wish for anybody is contentment and happiness, you know, and uh, because I try to, that's what I claw my Do you think way. you have that now? No, no, not even close. Uh, but but that's what I that's success. What do you think you would need for that to happen? Um, I'm not healthy, you know. I need I need health. I need my. I'm not mentally healthy, so I need to figure out whatever you know. And I go to therapy, and I go to you know. I'm medicated, and so when I see somebody else rawly hurting in front of me. Um, my empathy is like on high alert right now, and uh, I would have done I, the same thing if someone started cr- a woman, if someone started crying in front of me. It's not a woman. I, would, I thought I was coming in to do a funny bit about yeah, you the showed up in a costume. <laughs> I came in, I ruined the entire thing. I should have never come in here. I'm Why really just, I'm, I'm just really crying about these shorts. I was I just, just, I well, anyway, say a Whitney, funny story. Whitney, you are a gem, and I would love you to come back another time and 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 anytime you want. You are uh, truly a gift to comedy and to the world. And I wish you nothing but happiness. I hope this uh, veterinarian works out. I hope that you're- I also wanna say something. Can I say something really quick? Um, I have looked up to you for so long and uh, I've always been very shy and anxious around you. And I think the first couple of times we met, I like disassociated as like a fan. And I'm very um, grateful to know you at all. It's surreal. I love you. It's surreal. I love you. You're amazing. You really are. She and, is amazing. And, and how both, yeah, this is important. Dang. When I was 15, you performed at the Palace Theater in Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah. And I came backstage and I met you and I gave you a Xerox picture of <laughs> me doing improv and I asked you to sign it. <laughs> you did and if i had more time i would have brought it here to give to you because i think that's the most insane thing that someone would do to a celebrity a comedian i was so excited to meet you and i was like here's a xerox copy of me doing improv can you sign it and i remember you looking at it being like um okay congrats security 
a Xerox copy of, of improv. Me doing improv. That's great. That's but it was a great show. It and people show. should follow you too. You are on the road. You want to you want to plug anything, Dan? Uh, I mean, you can follow my Instagram. I'm I'm at Dan Levy Show. Follow me for yeah. live comedy. You've been doing arenas comedy. with uh, yeah, Mr. Mulaney. I've been on tour with John Mulaney from uh, the From Scratch tour. It's been incredible. So um, yeah, it's through February. So. Like, what's it like doing show? comedy for 30,000? Is that <laughs> it's, necessary? It's it's amazing, yeah. It's a crazy experience. It's been Fantastic. Really cool. Yeah. Well, I wish you nothing but success. Come back anytime. I you left you. tissues all over the floor. I'm sorry. What's I know. Oh, here? my God. Sh crying with dirty tissues in front of a germaphobe. Yeah, I'm is. abusive. I think I'm abusive. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to cry. Forcing a man to watch me cry <laughs> is like such a power move. No, I, I, I see it. You're a wonderful person. That's your heart. You wear your heart on your sleeve. Okay. That's another episode. Thank you, Whitney. Whitney, and watch on Netflix. Jokes, right? Is the is the last one, but you podcast. can get and her podcast. Um, ba, I'll bully ba, you to come on. Uh, you don't have to bully me. I'll be there. How do you do that? How do you do that? There you there, go. There it is. Her podcast that's, is amazing. That's anyway. the TikTok sound bite. Yes, it is. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's the ticket. I was like, well, that's <laughs> embarrassing. <Boom. laughs> <laughs> That's actually, I'm so bummed.